Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? We have a special, special interview live. I've been waiting to do this for several years, man. So I'm excited that we get to hop on here. But uh, if you guys are in the replay, give me a hashtag replay. Let me know you're here, show you some love. But I have the offer creation uh, legend guru sensei black belt dojo <laughs> master <laughs> i try to give out like every high title i could oh, um, nice. talk <laughs> we're gonna talk about offers um because steve is the best at it and i have some questions for him to run through some industries what like he would recommend for people in, in certain industries what kind of offers to do but we're also going to talk about uh his summit that he just started uh, actually let me i have a cool little ticker here boom <laughs> so you guys can check it out uh he interviewed yeah. a lot of people with their yeah, uh, finaloffersummer.com. I don't know. I snagged that domain, dude. So, <laughs> um, so cool. Steve, can you <laughs> briefly <laughs> can you talk about really uh, like what the Final Offer Summit is and uh, why why you decided to create it, et cetera? You got me here? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Hello? yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good to go? Yeah. Sweet. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, I decided to make the final offer summit. So it actually started back when Russell was doing the 30 days summit and the 30 days summit. Um, I was watching him. It was actually not his idea. Um, the 30 days summit, he was going back and looking at other cool summits that were out there that really impacted his life. And he, there was a guy, I can't remember who it was, who, whose summit it was. Um, but he was going on a trip to Hawaii and, uh, he wanted something to read. So he printed out the transcriptions from this guy's summit called 30 days or something like that. And uh, it had been done several years prior or whatever. And he goes and he reads it. And as he started reading all of these, these people's responses on how they'd get their life back in 30 days if they lost it all, really strong patterns began, like crazy strong patterns, you know? And um, he decided that he would go and do a summit that was similar. How would he get it all back? Well, I was like watching him put this together. And as I, I don't know. I, everyone hacks Russell, which is great. So everyone has a 30 days thing now, 30 days, this 30 days, that, which is great. It's just fine. But I was like, I want to do something that's different though. Instead of like, how would you get it back? Let's go with the angle of what would you do if you knew you couldn't keep working? And so I didn't want to it's call actually it a real situation for some people right now. Right. So, yeah, I it, know you didn't time it with every, you didn't expect all this to happen, but yeah, no, it's so true. And, and like, we've been working on this for over almost a year now. And uh, so this hook came up way before anything economically was going on. And um, it took me a couple of days to come up with the angle on this. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to call it Offer Summit because that's not a hook. So I bought OfferSummit.com. I was like, that's so cool. But realized Russell didn't even do Funnel Summit. And I was like, Offer Summit is going to be freaking boring, man. We're all just going to brain dump on each other. It's not going to be awesome. <laughs> so I was like, we need to make a cool scenario, you know? So yeah. that's what the scenario turned out to be. Like, how would you set up stuff if you knew you couldn't work in 90 days from I'm, now. So, I'm curious what was your first offer ever my first offer ever yeah mm, depends how far back you want to go yeah right you go to middle school like i had these two m m packets and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah actually it's stuff like that man i had i almost got kicked out of high school because i wouldn't stop selling like random knickknacks to other kids we'd go to a walgreens and get those laser pointer pens they were like two bucks at the time. My brother and I would go back, we'd use my mom's labeler and we would put on there like 12 bucks. So we'd go walk around and we have, you know, back when cargo shorts were cool, our cargo shorts would be loaded with these laser pointer pens. We'd be making hundreds of dollars a day. And uh, I had to do a bunch of community service for that. I almost got kicked out of school. Um, yeah, I, I, I got in trouble once. Like I was doing the same thing, but with whoopee cushions. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to figure out like who is giving out all these whoopee cushions. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so Dude, yeah, that's, so awesome. Martin, that's exactly what happened though. You know, this was like, yeah. that was if you guys are on live, give me hashtag live. Um, say what's up to Steve here. Um, what what has been your most profitable offer ever that you've ever done? Mm. Revenue versus profit. Most profitable offer, standard webinar, man. Honestly, because it's like a ninety three percent margin. <laughs> um, if you can get them to work right, it's not easy to do or pull off obviously you know what i mean but uh when you do that it's crazy it's kind of it's kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing the other most lucrative like profitable not revenue but just profit would probably be a, um, certain styles of affiliate marketing gotcha Ooh. yeah yeah what about what what has been your worst offer that you've ever done 
Dude, it took a lot of tries, man. <laughs> Dozens of tries over years and years. Probably one of the most embarrassing ones I ever did was when I was just starting. I had just come out of being a door to door salesman and I didn't, I hadn't learned how to make like an offer. I, I hadn't learned how to like, I learned how to sell and I started learning how to use the internet. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go make these eBooks. I started following Pat Flynn and Pat Flynn was doing a bunch of affiliate marketing as he does. And, uh, yeah, we created like, I don't say we, it was just me at the time. I wrote an ebook called top 10 ways to get straight A's. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, who's going to buy that? Students. What do students not have? Money. What do students not care about usually? Straight A's. And if they know how to get them, they don't buy a book around it. You so both the domain. I want to go to archive.org. Well, it was a big deal for me because I got kicked out of my first semester of college. I had to wait four years, had to go learn how to learn, and then came back to get back in school. Barely graduated high school. So for me, it was like this big feat where I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. I learned how to learn. And I was getting straight A's, uh, just about, you know. And so classic example of don't sell what you think is awesome. That was probably my worst offer. Gotcha. So uh, what's cool about this summit that you have going on is that you have people from so many different industries and like business models. Um, what is, would have been like, uh, obviously like people have to go sign up. It's a free summit, like finalsoffersummit.com to go check it out. But like, what have been like the most interesting ones that you've heard? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, there's been an angle. A while ago, so it's like, yeah. There's been an angle on every one of them, but, uh, Spencer Meekum's on there professional affiliate, right? It's like, it's all he does. Cool to see what he would do to make his thing totally like automatable. Sharfin is on there, Alex Sharfin. Uh, amazing, very different answer for the exact same problem. And I think that's why I like this summit and I this angle so much, because it's not an easy question. What would your offer be to fund the rest of your life? Like I, I asked over a hundred people to be on this and there was definitely a chunk of people that were like, I'm not even going to try to answer that. Uh, no, thank you. I don't want to be on this. Like, <laughs> this is a hard yeah. answer. Hard question. Yeah, I know. I remember when I did it, like I had to like think about it. Like there was a lot of scenarios and like you have to think about it for sure. Do you really like do it? Quarter. It's like an off the cuff. And most things I do, you know, some of it, as far as interviews go or summits, usually it's off the cuff. And this one isn't as much. People had to prepare for it. Uh, Allison Prince came in and she taught how she would do it with e -com and leveraging different audiences in a way I'd never thought of before. It was brilliant. Um, that's anyway, David Asarno came on. What's cool about David's is he's like, man, when you asked me that question it was so cool, but then it also like slapped me in the face and I realized why am I not doing this in the first place? So he actually <laughs> went and changed his entire value ladder after being on the summit, his entire business changed. Cause he's like, we should be doing our final offer anyway. <laughs> so that's cool. I think it's a Joel good Roy. exercise to like, think okay. about like, what if, if I was in this scenario, what do I, I would do and try to like pull it to the present moment? Yeah. Um, definitely helps. Absolutely. So, that, yeah. That's been one of the powers of uh, getting all these people on there. What, it, what do you see is um, the most common like theme or mistake people make when they are like doing offers out there for their business? Um, they don't make the sales message at the same time. Um, they're not, it's not two different steps. You're really making, it's the same step. Like I'm going to go design another offer. You know, we, we make them a lot. I'm going to do it and here. That's like copywriting, right? Sales message. Sort of. Yeah. It's, um, um, they don't have any strong positioning. They don't ride the wave of what's already allowed in society. They don't, there's not, a. would say that it, it actually usually goes all the way back. They don't know who they sell to. And then specifically, they don't know what mark their market they're selling to. And the big issue is that people don't know that those are two separate things. They think markets are people. Markets are locations, right? Not, not people. And so I need to think about like, what's the location, right? That I'm going to sell into and who's my dream customer that's going there. Separating those out makes headline writing a lot easier, makes message and offer creation a lot easier. It's a lot of the stuff comes together at the same time. There's a lot of people have made fun of me. They're like, you don't need to go through this massive offer creation process. It's there's ways to make it faster. I'm like, Oh yeah, there totally is. But a core offer, there's some work that goes into designing that. What is, how do you find those locations? Um, classic example, waking up, putting my kids in a, in the car 
for just a fun Saturday outing, just going to, I don't know, the farmer's market. That's the point is I wake up and I go to the farmer's market because I am not the market. And so I'm a dream customer that I don't always go to farmer's markets, but let's just say in this example, you know, like I'm waking up and I'm going to a farmer's market. That's what you have to figure out is like, okay, number one, who is my dream customer? My dream customer, not my could be customer, not, hey, they have money, therefore I'll sell them customer because that's not a dream either. It's who's my dream customer and then where are they trying to go? And I ask myself, where are the places, virtual or physical, they're going to to try and solve their problems? And that's a big, big, big move right there. And what's cool about that is that when you figure that out, you'll start to listen to the market. And it's like, I don't know how else to describe it. You become a detective rather than thinking you have to be this creative genius that makes something from scratch that no one's ever heard of before. It's like, the game's not really about that. It's more about like, where, who are they? Where are they going? What are they trying to solve? And it's, people get so caught up on the red ocean, blue ocean thing, man. They get so caught up on it. My goal, like, like think about this. Actually, um, I don't have it with me right here. It's on the other side of this. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got to write a chapter in Russell's Expert Secrets book. Did he rewrite? And this is what I wrote about. This is what he wanted me to write about. He's like, okay, I need. He's like, go go write a chapter on this concept because like you geek out on it and it's awesome and it's helpful. And so, envision with me: you fall asleep, you wake up, you live on an island. You live in a village. It's a big island, but it's still an island. You wake up and you go and you sell fish. Okay, and unless you sell those fish that day your family doesn't eat. So the question is, where do you take your fish? And you start thinking about that. You're like, well, I would go to where people are, right? Red ocean, right? I'm not gonna go, I have a blue ocean product, therefore I'm gonna sell it to the blue ocean. No one's there, the blue ocean doesn't exist. Everything is blue where nobody is. And that's the problem. We make blue ocean products, but we sell them to red oceans. And that's, that's another one of the most major mistakes people make is like, and so that's the trick of the summit here is that I not only need to create a cool offer, I have to find a traffic source that's loud, that's bloody, that's consistent, that's massively competitive. Contrary to what I was taught in college, I actually want that. And like, and, and that's the big trick. So. I make blue ocean products, but I don't sell them to the blue ocean because there's nobody there. I go sell them to red oceans where there's lots of foot traffic and there's a pattern and a habit of going to. Habits are the most expensive thing to create. Um, so I can sidetrack that and just go to where everyone already is. Go go where everyone already is. So that's yeah. a little bit of a rant there, but like that's- No, that's, no, no, I, 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 it's like blue ocean is the byproduct. It's not the product, right? It's yeah, like, so I'll make a blue ocean product itself, but yeah. I'm not selling it to the blue because no one's there. Yeah. The first source of traffic is the red. And as I get people to come out and like, oh, that is cool. Then I start to develop. Everybody has two markets. The first is the red market, the red ocean. The second, though, is the one you're developing. Like I would consider ClickFunnels its own marketplace now. It's so big. It's so large. They found yeah. out. There's customers. a lot of people like trying to like make products in that market now. <laughs> and use yeah. And then like companion things that attach to it and stuff like click funnels is a market now. Um, yeah. but for a while they weren't. And so they had to go get their customers from other red competitive markets. And that, that game right there, that's, that's a fun game. That is in my mind, marketing. Gotcha. I want to play a quick little game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to name some industries and I mean, you can keep this short. Uh, yeah. what kind of <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, what kind of like offer slash funnel would type would you do for this industry that you think sure. will work the best? All right. Does that sound cool? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, agency freelancer. Agency freelancer. You're asking what kind of offer or funnel? Uh, both or whichever you think. Uh, agency slash freelancer. I would use a phone funnel. I'd use an application oh. funnel. That's what I use for mine. Um, and My then the card. offer. I found for the offer for agency, it's not so much about the, f like, so I have a funnel building agency, right? One of the mistakes that I've made in the past is they just want the funnel. Just give them the funnel, right? Instead of building the offer around other supporting things, which you still need to do, speed to outcome is what really matters in the agency. So that needs to be hard cooked into the offer itself. Gotcha. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so this this <laughs> this idea doesn't sound that good anymore <laughs> because with every one of these industries, it's very like I guess specific. Like the Bring it, man. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> information products. Dude, love webinar funnels. Still do. Webinar, okay. Don't know why everyone makes fun of them. Oh, I make millions of dollars with them, so <laughs> they work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess you still want people to make fun of them, right? So that you can still make millions. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone, let's spread the belief that webinars don't work, please. That would help me so much. Just keep, keep, keep doing that. <laughs> um, uh, coaching and consulting. <laughs> coaching and consulting back to phone funnel. Yeah, I yeah. love that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, network marketing. I actually use the phone funnel for that one. It's a combo of, of uh, so I, I use this one right now. I got, I got like almost 700 people on my downline. I haven't spoken to any of them. I just automated the recruitment process through the phone funnel. Um, affiliate. Um, single page bridge funnel with five follow-up pages doing micro training. That's my favorite model. I, that's the one secrets of traffic.com right now. Like, so we use, that's how I got, man, I got fourth place in the affiliate contest for traffic secrets. Cause in the last few hours, Dean Graciosi dropped a freaking email and dethroned me from third to fourth of all people. I'm, yeah. I'm honored. It was him. <laughs> that did it. But what we'll turn that affiliate page to soon is I call it a affiliate. Uh, I call it a bridge funnel versus a bridge page. So there's going to be quite an extensive fault sequence. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I've never seen that concept, but then again, I don't build funnels for a living. So, uh, <laughs> you built a lot of funnels. <laughs> um, cool, man. So 20 minutes, um, for people, uh, go join, go join the summit. It's for free at final offer summit.com. Go check it out. I'm going to watch the videos again. Cause I'm curious what some of these people would say yeah. right? for their situation. Where are they going to sell fish? If it was their yeah. last day. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything you want to say about the summit no, and what's dude, happening? I appreciate you having me on here, man. This is super cool. Uh, and everyone, Daxi is the man, just so you know. Definitely go to finaloffersummit.com. But uh, if you wonder who is doing all my content, wait, pointing the direction. <laughs> okay. cool. the I man. appreciate it, dude. Yeah, all right, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you hopping on. And uh, yeah, talk to you later. Sweet, man. Thanks. Cool.